I know it's customary for many to wait until 11.59 and start counting down on December 31st, and then you bring in the New Year's shouting, jumping, dancing, everything. But as we all know, tomorrow is not promised. Amen. And so it's up to all of us to give God thanks any time that we are allowed to and able to. So this morning, I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful that God has allowed me to see this day. And I am truly grateful that if the Lord spares my life one more day, tomorrow at this time, I'll be 40 years old. Now, it's one thing, usually I can get up here and I can tell y'all, you know, about my life and how God has allowed me to see almost 40 years old because I was born premature and was not expected to make it to year one. This morning, I got an entire amen corner up here who can back up my story today. <laughs> and so I am thankful that our pastor has allowed me to close out the year. I'm thankful that our pastor listened to himself and to us and took time off this week for himself. So, but I'll tell you one thing I'm grateful for above everything else is this church. I will talk about this more in the message, but Christmas Day did not look the same for us at this church this year as it has in the past. This church was packed with people on Christmas Day. We had the LGBT Center of Raleigh was here. Our community center was open, and we had a good old time. We had a lot of food, a lot of fun, a lot of fellowship. It was, it was awesome, y'all. This morning, I want to take time on the topic, note to self. Because as we all know, as we all should know, we all need to take time to encourage ourselves. Because if we can't encourage ourselves, we can't expect nobody else to do it for us. We have to love ourselves in order to be able to provide love to somebody else. And so this morning, I want to start with a little bit of a testimony to let y'all know just how good God has been to me personally. In 2009, I made a decision that would change my life forever. At the time, I was out of work due, due to illness. For many of you who don't know, for a few years, I was legally blind. Yes. 2200 vision. Still attempting to drive. Thank God for traveling. Mercies. Yeah. So, look at me now. I'm just telling you. Won't he do it? Won't he will? Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not the type of person who can just sit around doing nothing. I spend a lot of my days here at the church cleaning, stuffing bulletins, trying to keep David out of trouble in the office. But one of my major passions in life, helping our homeless brothers and sisters, still was not getting fulfilled. I looked into several opportunities here in Raleigh, but none of them seemed to be a match with what I personally wanted to do and what I felt God was calling me to do. I eventually came across a program called AmeriCorps, the domestic version of the Peace Corps, and in particular a program called AmeriCorps Partnership to End Homelessness. This program was looking for volunteers to assist with case management, food pantry management, volunteer management, etc., for programs that serve the homeless community. Bingo. Found my match. But there was only one problem. The program was in Greensboro. Now, I thought that was too far to be traveling, especially given my health issues and especially for a program that only paid you a stipend of $500 a month. But, fast forward. I drove to Greensboro, did a drive-by up the facility. It wasn't up to my, my standards because of the agency that was housed in some old, like 1970s, 80s uh, commercial trailers. And so I'm thinking of driving to Greensboro. I'm not going to be going to work in some rundown trailer. But you know when God works, how things 
how things go, right? Next thing I know, I filled the application out, put it in the mail, went back to Greensboro, had an interview, got the, set for the position, bam. Here we go. Got something to the program. Besides the valuable skills, friendships, and full-time job that came out of that year of service, one of my fondest memories is one of our very first assignments during my two-week orientation. Now, I hope y'all caught the part about a full-time job. Now, I went expecting one thing, to go and just give up my a year of service. God had other plans in mind for me. God will work through situations for your good if you will let God do it. So, we were given an assignment to write a note to self. This would be a personal letter to ourselves that we will open at the end of our service year. The letter would serve as a reminder of why we gave up a year of our lives to do something for someone else. While I cannot find my letter now, I searched all over my apartment yesterday trying to look for it. I can't find it. I still remember in that letter of telling my future self that I was proud of the sacrifices that I had made and the fact that, that my introverted self pushed forward. I guess I will own my introvertedness every single day. I had no idea at the time that at the end of the year, I would end up managing the very shelter that I volunteered at for the past year. Well, I told y'all God would do it. Fast forward to 2018. Every morning as I get ready for work, back in Raleigh. Now, let me stop for a sec. Here's a little caveat. God led me to Greensboro. I tried my best, as y'all know, to get back to Raleigh. But God would not let me get back to Raleigh yet. See, God, my mission in Greensboro was not completed yet. When God sends you somewhere, you are there until God says otherwise. Now, this past June, in a car ride back from D.C., in some conversations, God put two and two together. God said, it's time for you to come home. And God will make a way for me to get back home. That was in June. I'm almost exactly three months later, I started working at UNC Rex. God will put situations in your path. God will put people in your path who will help you on this journey. If you get nothing else, hear that this morning. Now, I watch CBS this morning. One of the anchors on there, Gail King, you know, Oprah's BFF, has a segment that airs occasionally entitled Note to Self, where mostly famous people read letters to their future selves. The list has included familiar names from Vice President Joe Biden to Oprah, of course, and one of my favorites, Kermit the Frog. Now, obviously, I've loved frogs from a very early age. <laughs> yeah. So, this picture says a lot to me. It says a lot. And if you decipher this picture, you will realize a lot of things about me from this one picture. I'm just saying, y'all. Just, just saying. Just saying. Let, let that sink in for, for what it may. Let that sink in. It's vitally important that we take time to encourage not only our future selves, but also our current selves. We live in a society where it's so easy to get bogged down and depressed with all that's going on that we forget to look on the bright side. We're alive. We have somewhat good health. And most importantly, we have people around us who love us, who care for us, who will support us through everything that we go through in life. And so this morning, I'd like to read a note to self of a different kind, sort of, and ask that you will reflect back as we prepare for this upcoming 2019. As we know, as a church, we've accomplished a lot this year. But don't get it twisted. The work has just begun. The work has just begun, y'all. December 30th, 2018. Dear St. John's Metropolitan Community Church, 
Who would have thought? Who would have thought that a church that started out in 1976 as a Bible study in a second floor apartment would have grown into what it is today? Who would have thought that a church that's 40 plus years old would be doing more work in the community than churches have been around hundreds of years? As I look back over the past year, I can only say that I'm so proud of you. Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. We begin the year by officially installing our new pastor. A step that stretched many in our community, but in a good and powerful way. Pastor's theme for this year was, Lord, send a revival and let it begin with me. We have truly lived out that message in ways that surprised many of us, but God knew that we were capable of handling every bit of it. From standing with those in our community facing deportation, to traveling to Washington, D.C., to stand with those we had never met before, we let it begin with us. When natural disaster struck, we stood strong. We stood proud, and we led efforts of hurricane relief. The Sisters and Sister Act sang, if my, brother, my sister is in trouble, I will always help them out. Y'all know that movie. Don't act like you don't know it. The first one, not the second one. For St. John's, if my sister, brother, friend, neighbor, stranger, etc., is in trouble, we will always help them out. Jesus teaches us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, we have no choice but to help. There may be a time when we are the one who are in need of help. Amen? In the midst of tragedy and sorrow, we find strength and an opportunity to reconnect. This year, we had several opportunities to do so. With the unexpected passing of our brother and friend, Amin, we came together as a church to show, that what, to show that love that we have for one another. Our board graciously agreed to provide for funeral expenses because we're not going to let one of our own go sit in a papa's grave somewhere. While he is no longer with us in the flesh, Amin continues to be a part of us. I am so proud of you. I just can't say it enough. Who would have known that in the midst of a hurricane, God would provide the confirmation needed to open the community center? Who would have known that in the midst of a hurricane, God would provide the confirmation needed to open the community center? We say that God works in mysterious ways. No. God works in on time, right now ways. What was supposed to have been a temporary shelter for those seeking refuge during Hurricane Matthew turned into the unofficial opening of the St. John's MCC City on the Hill Community Center. A center that continues to operate at a minimum of three days per week, serving 20 plus people each day. Once again, I am so thrilled and proud of the work that you are doing for your brothers and sisters. There's not enough time or paper to go through all of the great things that you as a church have done this year. What amazes me the most is the relationships built within the church building and out in the community. Sidebar. As a result of one of those connections built this year, your pastor and I spent several hours yesterday going to picking up donations from the LGBT center as they relocated. We picked up another, uh, another flat screen TV. We picked up chairs. We picked up another refrigerator, y'all. That tree that we started this year, it, that last month, has produced so much fruit, it still amazes me. We did a Let It Begin With Me Christmas tree to help support those in our community. That tree has produced a brand new gas stove. One freezer is here, another freezer that's on the way. Another refrigerator yesterday. Not one, but two microwaves. Look at God. Yeah. 
if you ask, if you ask and you step out on faith, God will provide what you need. Now, when God provides, that means there's more work to be done. So as T.G. Jake says, get ready, get ready, get ready, y'all, because it's coming. <sighs> y'all, God is good. Folks have stepped into roles this year that has just amazed me. For the longest time, we've had a lot of seat warmers around here sitting in their blessed assurances. But this year, people have gotten up off their blessed assurances and stepped into roles that God had called them into. But that was only possible because of people like me stepping out of roles I've been sitting in for way too long. Allowing people, I heard the amen back there, allowing people to step up and use their gifts as well. In 2019, look for what's going to happen even more. As we prepare for 2019, I would encourage you to focus on three things. Focusing on these three things will not only continue the forward momentum of the church, but also continue to personally allow for the personal growth of everyone in the church. But note, these three things are not just for the members. They are for everyone who steps through the doors of this church or any church. So don't get it twisted. First-time guests are just as important as those who have been around since the beginning. Amen? Number one, live. Why spend all your time worrying about tomorrow? Why spend all your time worrying about what you don't have? We've all been given this life to live, not just go through the motions, to live it like it's golden. As the song says, living life like it's golden, because y'all know life is golden. Treat it that way. If we truly put our trust in God, we know that things will work out. So quit worrying about it. I know, even though it comes naturally. You should know how it goes when you trust in God. Suppose you have spent all your time worrying about how you're going to open the community center with no funding resources, no volunteers, and no food. Then it would never have opened. But since you did, have you had to worry about any of those things? No. God has provided you with steady sources of food, dedicated volunteers, although more could always be used, and you have not had to touch your savings. God is good. See, God will provide. God will put people in your midst who can support you, but you can also support them in return. Look at all the connections that have been built in 2018. Prepare for even more in 2019. All it takes is for you to be open. Amen? Number two, love. This one come naturally for you, and it has since day one. Think back to the early years and your mission, Let every, uh, letting everyone know that Jesus is the Christ. Reflect back on the days of the little red wagon, marching down Hillsborough Street, singing, Jesus loves me, and blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Look back just at this past week. While most churches offered just a Christmas Eve service or a Christmas Day Mass, you kept your doors open all day long on Christmas or to provide a safe place for those who had nowhere to go on Christmas or just needed a break from their family and friends. Those are examples of love in their purest forms. In 2019, look for more ways to show that love that you have. As the book of Colossians reminds us, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion with kindness, with humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive them. Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God, the Creator, through him. Number three, serve. As with love, serving the people of God comes naturally to you. Serving and loving go hand in hand. As followers of Christ, we are charged with being servants. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. What makes us think we're any different? 
What greater example do we need? Even in the midst of mopping floors on a Saturday morning, you may be presented with the opportunity to serve. What will you do? Ignore the opportunity or do something about it? We're all presented with opportunities each and every day to be Jesus with skin on. 2019 will present us with more opportunities to serve. But what does that look like? If we look at some of the opportunities that we had in 2018, it may be providing a meal, providing a ride, offering a prayer, a hug, or just sitting and being present with someone. You never know how just your being present with someone can change their day or their life. Don't let opportunities to serve pass you by. And focusing on these three areas as a church, your individual lives as well will take on the same. You are all called to live a fulfilling life. Each day you are presented with opportunities to love and to serve if you are open to them. As we close out this year, I encourage you to live your life like it's golden, to love each other, and look for opportunities to serve. As Mr. Rogers reminded us this morning, the world is full of helpers. Are you one as well? Are you? We all have work to do, but it's going to take us getting up of our of the assurances and doing something about it. So live the life that God has given you. Love each other with the love of God. Serve as Jesus taught us. Wishing you a wonderful new year. May it be so. Amen. Something happens when we mention that name and we're baptized in that name. Something happens that transforms us, that allows us to live a life that God called us to live, a life of love, sharing God's love with all people. There's something that happens when we say that name, when we call on that name, something transforms. When, when we are baptized and we start to call on that name, we move into this place where we stop going to God and telling God how big our problems are. We start going to our problems and telling our problems how big our God is. We start saying, I, I've got this because of the one that's living within me. We can come into the world and go out into the world being all of who God called and created us to be, living our life as our true selves. What is it the, the saying goes now, living your best life? I like to keep it real. We can go out and live our best life when we call on that name. As y'all have made this commitment today, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this journey. This is a very special day in your lives. It is all going to be different from this point forward. It is going to change. It is going to look different. But I'm excited for you, and I'm excited to see what God does in and through you and continuing that work that God's already started within you. Continue to be all of who God called and created you to be. Continue to embrace all of who God called and created you to be. And to go out and to be that love that God needs you to be in the world. To be that love that so many other people need you to be in the world. To show them that there is somebody who cares for them. To show them that somebody loves them. So thank you for allowing us to be on this journey with you. I am thankful that God called us to be here together. So please rise as you are able as we prepare to go back out. I would remind us of the words of our own prophetess regarding love. If you can't love yourself, how are you going to love anybody else? Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Let us sing together as we go back out. And I'll remind you that we have lunch afterwards, so please join us for lunch. Nobody.